Continuing on, last week we talked a little bit about the helmet of salvation, right? Amen. That was some good stuff about girding up our mind, you know, being able to have the assurance and hope set firmly so that we don't uh, find ourselves being, uh, I don't know, annoyed, <laughs> annoyed, badgered, distracted, <coughs> beaten up by the enemy who wants to come and continually tell you you ain't good enough. Amen? He's always there to tell you you're not good enough. That's right. So once you've settled the fact that it isn't about how good you are, it's about what Christ did for you, it's all over. The battle's over. And so we call that putting on the helmet of salvation. Praise God, we are saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, we talked a little bit, I think, at the end of that message as well, about soul salvation, and that is daily. You know, receiving the engrafted word of God, James says, in meekness, putting my strength aside, my pride aside, allowing God to speak into my life and receive that, allows my soul to be saved. That's what James says. And so soul salvation is something that occurs in our walk as we grow in Christ. It's not just a one-time deal like being born again. When we get born again, we're saved. We're the Lord's. But now it's time to let this mind come along for the ride, okay? You know, let it come along in the journey. And so we let it be renewed by the Spirit of God and His Word. Amen? So that was a big part of last week, is having the right mindset to be able to fight the good fight, to be able to lay hold of the eternal life, to have a helmet of salvation on and this week, I want to pick it up with uh, another thought, not necessarily to continue so much on the armor of God, but really the principle of, of life and living here in this world. So, Father, we thank you for your word this yes. morning. We, we ask, Lord, that you would impart to us those things that will strengthen and equip us for the walk. Lord, for the fight. Father, for being able to engage this world but not lose our way. Lord, to be able to find ourselves in a place that's well-pleasing in your sight. One that will be rewarded when he goes home. So, Lord, we thank you, Father, for your words right now. In Jesus' name, let's say that. Amen. Amen. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to flip to Ephesians chapter 6 for just a moment here. And, and um, I'm also going to read a couple of verses on John chapter 14 and John chapter 15, just to kind of get started. We see that when, when uh, uh, we were reading out of Ephesians chapter 6 here, that in verse 12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We live in a very natural world where they do not, like the people of the world, I'll qualify that, do not like to acknowledge the realities of spiritual darkness, spiritual forces. So everything is natural. Every answer of man is something natural, what they can see with their eye, what they can figure out with their own intellect and their own mind. But the war is not so. The war is indeed spiritual. The war is against the forces of darkness that are doing everything they can to try to prevent the people that God so loves, his children, from coming to him. Amen. Here is a profound thought that I had yesterday. Every human being, child, that enters into this world will go to be with the Lord if they die before they come to the age of understanding. Amen. That's how much God loves us. Go figure. Every single person has an opportunity to go be with the Lord. Those that don't are because they choose not to. That's right. Because if a child dies before the age of understanding that God would love for them to surrender their life back to Him, because he loves them and can pour out his abundant life for them. The only reason people don't want to do that is because they love their wickedness. They love the darkness, the scripture says in 1 John. Men love darkness rather than light. Amen. Quoting to you in the scripture, amen? Every person, when they make that choice, falls from God's favor. Falls from the place of being protected. Once they've come to the age of understanding, and they're able to discern, then the choice has got to be made. So every child prior to that age, they die. They will go to be with the Lord. Amen. That's amazing love. God is not out to see how much penance we can pay. That's right. That's right. That is amazing grace. Amen. Wow. I thought about that. It's a simple truth. But it's profound how much God loves us. Sometimes you feel you might be walking on a tightrope in your Christianity. But I'm telling you what, get the devil off your back. 
It isn't about what you can do for God. It's what He's already done for you. Amen. What we need, most importantly, we're going to find out through this passage. Is our relationship with God alive? Alive and living and well. And it happens. It's expressed as we do what the final part of the putting on the armor does is all about praying always. When we are in prayer with our Father, when we are praying, we are living out of relationship. It isn't one sided communication. It isn't me making my request. It's about me and God communing by His Spirit. I woke up this morning. I'll just be honest and talk to us a little bit. I woke up this morning and I was frustrated. I was, I was frustrated in my flesh. I was frustrated, and, and, and I believe it was the Lord allowing me to be frustrated so He could drive the point on. I don't normally wake up frustrated. You know? I usually wake up on um, that sunflower. <laughs> From the game the other night, you know, the sunflower, not the snapdragon. <laughs> and you know, I, I woke up and I realized. What I was missing right away, as soon as I woke up, I was missing the, the assurance and the presence of God's voice in my life. Not by assurance of salvation, but hearing Him, knowing His heart. I normally always know what's happening and always feel very in tune with what's going on. And I woke up this morning and go, God, Lord, I need you. I, I need your voice. What? What are you saying? What are you doing? I don't sense it right now. And I began to reflect. I'm thinking, do, do I got problems in my life? Do I got sin in my life? Do I got unforgiveness going on? What's going on? Right now, something is shutting down the voice. I knew it right away. And so I reflected on all kinds of things in my life. I'm like, God, forgive me, Lord. You know, as I forgive others. I mean, I'm not here to sit there and get legalistic about my relationship with you, but something's going on. What do you want me to unearth but uncover? What he wanted me to see is how important it is for us to share. If you're living life without his presence, you're not living life at all. Jesus felt it when he was on the cross, when the Lord turned his back on him, when he became the sin off for the whole world for that moment. He, and it felt like an eternity. Jesus, he cried out, and he said, yeah. Father, why are you about forsaking me? God never leaves nor forsakes us. But Jesus felt the eternal separation when God had to look away when he became the offering for sin. Amen. And he had grieved him so bad that right out of his mouth and recorded for us for eternity, we would know that. And if we're not used to living the life, that's praying always with all manner of prayer and supplication in the spirit. You're not living life at all. You're just merely going through the motions. God is not condemning you for that. But he's saying there's something more, believer, brother and sister in Christ. There's something more. When you can wake up and you can hear your father speaking to you and you know what he's talking about. The words I speak, they ain't mine. They're spirit life. They're his words. I don't want to say a thing to us that isn't something that he's saying. I don't know how to lead and guide you. He does. He said, I'll lead and guide you. All I got to do is listen and obey. Allow him to lead and guide us. That's what our job is in Christ. To follow him, amen? God will lead and guide you in your life, on the job, in your family, in your relationships. You don't need any man to teach you that. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. And that's where we're going to go to John chapter 14. But I'm just kind of like prefacing where we've been and I see how what, what God is saying to me. We can fight a good fight... And above all, taking the shield of faith, it says, right? It says, above all, take the shield of faith that you can quench the fire. We can have a helmet of salvation on. We can have a full armor of God on. And we can fight this good fight, but without him, that fight is ill-fought. It's for naught. What are you afraid? Man, I tell you, when God's presence in his heart and his word and his life is just living in you and flowing in you, there's, there's peace beyond all understanding. Amen. Amen. It's beautiful. I love it. And that's what I'm trying to say to you. Maybe my being troubled was a lack of peace. And so I want to challenge us this morning as, as we look into God's word to not try to live life without him. Don't just go through the motions. Don't just go through what you think is pleasing to God. You know that borders on religion anyways. I have a relationship. He's called us to relationship. We're the children of God. We're the sons of God. Amen. And so today, when you look at Ephesians chapter 6, I don't have to teach all that again. I'm just pulling from you some points for you to begin to reflect on. Above, above all, taking that shield of faith. Well, I need to have my helmet of salvation. I need to have the word of God. And I need to what? Pray always, verse 18, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S. 
in my relationship with the Holy Spirit, not just by my spirit. Amen? Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, let's go back to John chapter 14 and look at this particular scripture in verse 26. It says, But when the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. What a blessing that when we live life in Christ, it isn't about us trying to figure anything out. Isn't that a joy? Children ain't trying to figure it out when they're trying to grow. They're just growing. They're growing in the care and the nurture of their family, those that love them. And as a child of God, it ought to be so. We are the planting of the Lord. Allow God to plant you into the church, the body of Christ, so that you can grow carefree. Carefree. You don't got to worry about, oh, I don't know this, I don't know that. Who cares? Let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you. I just run it to you. Amen? When you let the Lord lead and guide you, you grow right into it. who it is that he wants you to be because he is the one that created you for his purpose. Amen. He is the one concerned about what's going on in your life. To be ignorant is, is bliss, some say. As a child, I believe that as a child, you're going to be ignorant of a lot of things, and that's fine. But let God reveal to you those things in his season, and you can walk worthy. You can walk accountable to those things and give account to what God's done. Not, not what some other person has to give account for. Not for what somebody else has got revelation on and walking in. But give account for what God's leading you in. It's a personal thing between you and God. Yes, I know as a family of God, we love to try to encourage along that we might all become that perfect man together. But, you know, the reality is we're all in different spots. We're different places, had different backgrounds, different upbringings. What might be easier for one person to walk in is tougher for another. There's just differences, and that's okay. But in Christ, we're all one. And what we need to celebrate is that God is our God, and he will lead and guide us. Now, for me to say no to the Holy Spirit is to reject my relationship with him. And that's scary. Because that's what I felt a little bit this morning. I felt, Lord, I don't sense your presence. I don't have peace right now that I know what you're doing. And what I began to do is reflect on what issues, if any, he would reflect. And, you know, things would surface. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's good. I, I need to deal with that, Lord. You know, I will reflect. I'll get that taken care of. I don't want to procrastinate on that. You know, there were some things I felt bubble up, which was interesting. I'm seeking for a word. What do you want me to share? And he's showing me stuff. And I knew right away what he was doing after, after he showed me the things. I'm like, hey, Lord, you know, I'm faithful. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to do this. I don't want to be guilty of, you know, just think, you know, out, of, out of mind, out of sight. We were talking about walking in love the other day. How, how be it the love of God's in you? If you say, go back, you know, uh, be warm and filled, send them away. Go back, you know, maybe another day. So something what's well, in your power to do. Don't, don't tell your neighbor you'll do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, it's, it's the, the, the doing of God's will as he reveals it to you. And I knew it, you know, as he started to, to reveal to me some things. I'm like, okay, God, I'm not going to procrastinate. These need to be done. And he showed me right away what, what I was doing was I was being obedient to the Holy Spirit. God does that to find out whether we're obedient. You know, when we, when we start to get into a place where we don't sense his voice, many times it's because he shut down. Yeah. We're not being obedient in an area he's leading us. For me to sit there and say, well, that's fine, God, but I'm not having word for this morning. It's totally out of order. That's totally not what God would require or want for my life. Above and beyond anything, he wants my simple obedience to him. So when he quickens things in your heart, we need to be quick to say, yes, Lord. Yes. Because how, how can I expect to continue to walk in this, this, this precious relationship I have with him, where I have his peace and I have his joy, and I have fellowship with him as he's in the light, and I, and I sense what he's saying and doing. I don't, I don't feel at a loss at all. Amen? So, so we, we'd be quick to listen to the Holy Ghost. And so that's why I wanted to, to go ahead and bring the scripture to us. The Holy Ghost, he will teach us everything. And he'll also bring back to our remembrance. It's not just me thinking, oh, what potentially could be offending God or getting me in trouble. No, things start clicking in my mind. I give God the glory. It ain't a man thing. It's the Holy Spirit doing it. My, why wasn't I thinking about those things five minutes ago? Amen? 
Why wasn't I let those things trouble me five minutes ago? If they're troubling me now, it's because the Holy Spirit quickened it. He brought it to life. He brought it back to my remembrance. It's like, okay, Lord. I'm, I'm looking for relationship. He's saying, this is it. Yeah. And you either find yourself saying, well, no, but that's not what I want. You know, trying to push it aside. It's like, move on with them, right? Oh, boy. We've all been there, done that. Amen. Yeah? That's why not many should be teachers, because they get judged more straight. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, it's like, whoa, we better listen. We better take it in. Might not be the, the greatest thing sometimes. You might find out, oh, boy, I you know, accidentally offended somebody. I accidentally did this or did that, or no, I'm going to maybe contemplate doing this and that, and God's saying, better not. You know? I mean, it depends on the choice. So we listen to the Holy Spirit, then our relationship and our fellowship, our, and primarily our fellowship, will remain unbroken. And the relationship ain't going anywhere. And so in chapter 15 here, I want to bring us forward into this next verse here. He says in verse 7, so you don't even have to probably turn page if you're there. He says, very importantly, if you abide in me, and I believe that's what I was sensing this morning. I abide in him, and, and it wasn't right. Something wasn't happening. Something wasn't there, and it made me nervous. And I'm glad because when you know the Lord that way, you start crying out. You start getting anxious. You start saying, God, something's not quite right here. What's happening? That's wonderful to know you have a relationship with God that way. It's just a matter of way you process it. Amen. Not to get nervous up, you just start to go, whoa, you know. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples, ones I teach. Disciple, ones I teach. Amen. So as we open our hearts to God. And we're allowing him to equip us for the good fight. We find that the good fight is not a fight that we fight ourselves. It's ultimately what I'm saying. The fight that we fight is a fight that we fight with him. In our relationship with him. As we're observing and watching, we're praying, we're talking. It's not one-sided communication. We're talking to him. And he's talking to us. And he's letting us know how to engage. Or what to do. Or what's next. Or what to be aware of. That is fighting the good fight. Lest we make it more of us than it is of him. Amen? The battles of the Lord have quoted that. But sometimes we can get out there young and strong. And I want to do my exploits for God. And find the left joy bag or the peace bag or... You know, your relationship bag sitting here on the porch. And you're like, uh... Instead of getting punching bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this morning, God wants us to focus really on the aspect of communicating prayer, relationship with Him. I believe that with all my heart. He's not, he's not trying to equip you for some fight that you now have to muster up the will to be able to engage. No. It's about that living relationship you have with Him. And so I'm going to give you some scriptures that you can turn to this morning. First Chronicles 16:11. For those that are taking notes, I love this scripture. It says, "Yeah, I know if you're going to turn there, give you a little time." It says, "Seek the Lord and His strength." Seek his face continually. Mm, that rings true all throughout the scriptures, doesn't it? Praying always with all manner of prayer. You know, when we talk about giving God thanks, when we, we talk about praising the Lord for this is the will of God, giving God thanks, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, we're praying. That's, that's a part of prayer. That's an aspect of prayer. And we know how powerful that message has been. To thank Him. To give Him thanks. Stay humble. Thank Him. Amen. Give Him praise. He inhabits that praise. Amen. And so, so we find that we are to seek the Lord and His strength. Then we will truly be the warriors, the good soldiers, equipped to fight the good fight of faith. 
In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, very famous quotation of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. It says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. When Jesus was in the garden, he asked his disciples to tarry for a few moments, for a while, while he went and prayed. The Lord wanted to, to seek out the comfort of his Father because he was about ready to endure the most horrific thing anyone could go through, and that is laying their life down. Not involuntarily either. It's one thing if it's thrust upon you and in the moment you find yourself obedient to God, but it's another thing to have to go through with it with your eyes wide open, knowing what's going to go down. Amen? Amen? A bit of a different twist on that one. It's like, yeah, I know this is going to happen, I know they're coming, and i got to be ready for it. And so he asked his disciples to, to pray to tarry and to pray while he went on and he went forward in that garden to pray and we know what happened. What happened? Yeah, he come back and they had, fall, they had fallen asleep. They were sleeping. Too many times in our walk with God that can happen to us. We grow content. We get maybe disillusioned or frustrated depending on where we might be in our walk with the Lord. And we become weary in our well-doing. We become sleepy. And what suffers? Naturally, when we sleep, what suffers is my activity, my ability to communicate. You ever talk to me around 10 o'clock at night like, well, I <laughs> not get much out of me. I'm usually kind of tired and there's not a whole lot of responses coming back. <laughs> Or maybe it's nap time. <laughs> that's, that's what happens to us. When we start to, 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 to tire, grow weary, we don't engage and can't engage as we ought. So Jesus come back and he knew, he knew the disciples, they didn't understand the full reality. They didn't understand what was happening, what was about to happen. He had told them in the upper room, but the reality hadn't set in. So their ability to engage with fervor and prayer wasn't there, and they, they grew weary. They grew tired. Well, the hour was late. And so when he come back to them, he he, he, he he didn't really upbraid them. You know, he didn't, he didn't get out there and, and shame them, get all upset with them, because he knew. He knew where they were at. He, he gently commended them to understand this. This is something you have to realize. He says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is willing. He didn't get all upset because they didn't find the strength to stay fervent in prayer while he was with his father, ministering angels coming to you know, comfort him. He'd come back and he realized how much this world pulls us, how much the natural life will weary us. But he continued to give us the words of life, the strength and the purpose of living, watch and pray. If we're not watchful, awake, sober, we talked about the word sober a couple Wednesdays ago. Gave you the Greek on that word, it was good. If we're not awake and aware and alert, we can enter into temptation. The enemy to the spiritual life is slumber. Our worst enemy will be ourselves if we don't fully engage. God is willing. The Spirit is willing. So we have to take control and subdue and subject this old 
man, this old nature, it's going to constantly want to do what it wants to do all the time. Maybe that'll help us, you know, whether we're new in the faith, maybe we're old in the faith. People just don't live for God because it's just an easy thing to do. It's because they learn how to subdue that old man, take control of that old nature. We all have within us the ability to, to murmur, to complain, to become selfish, self-centered, to do the things that we want to do, our will, taking place of God's will. But we learn because we're disciples. We're taught, as the truth is in Jesus, to surrender that will, that ambition, that we might seek God's will and ambition to replace it. I thank God for that. Notice it's not just an empty thing. It's not me just emptying myself so that I can be pleasing to God. He said, no. He says, when you pray, pray after this manner. That your Father's will would be done here. In earth as it is in heaven. It's a replacing of my life with his life. That's a big point. Because if we look at our, our life and we look at Christianity, and we look at this thing and we say, well, it's, it's just a matter of I've chosen Christ now, so I can count myself to be blessed, that now I don't have to worry about eternal damnation, but I can move forward in life, I'm going to find myself walking out the rest of my life with really no purpose. Nothing but distraction. Nothing but disillusionment. Nothing but things, let me say this, spiritual darkness, warring against you to take you down. And that's what happens. But I find that I'm supposed to put off the old man, Ephesians chapter 4, be renewed in the spirit of my mind that I can do what? Put on the new man. And when I put on the new man, I am putting on the man that is able to do God's will. So there's a replacing of my life and my will with his will and his life. And so that's how we go through this life and never become weary. We, we never find ourselves lost. Like, I come into this thing, I'm 30 years into this thing, and, and all of a sudden I just say, well, that's it. You know, I want to go down, head down to the local, you know, pub, or I want to go down to the local, you know, wherever, uh, whatever they call those things, burlesque shots, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I don't find myself 30 years into this thing, all of a sudden finding no will to do God's will. You know what I'm saying? God's will is birthed and established in my life, and my heart as I walked with him for so many years, that's an impossibility. It is possible if I will it. I ain't gonna will it. Man, I ain't a fool. We're playing. You don't know what they're called. <laughs> yeah. They're, 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 they're called. No, 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 no. I just know what the signs look like when yeah. I went out Lexus and Telegraph for yeah. sure. Is that pure showgirls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All I'm saying, God's will has replaced my will, and it's my job to continue every day. When I wake up, He says, "Pray this manner of prayer," and so I pray every day, and I until God's will and his heart and his ways are established within my life it's a it's a daily thing because yep. i'm being taught but once we're taught and we begin to know now we can walk and it's not like rehearsing the same things i mean i'm able to move on how many of you know when you were learning before you knew how to write anything you had to learn your abc's right you had to learn the alphabet without the alphabet you couldn't write anything right. you just scribbles Right? To be able to write something of any legibility, you had to understand the mechanics of it. And so you had to learn. And so you know, man, you had to say, A, B, C, D. You had to go through all the mechanics of learning that. But once you learned that, you don't do that anymore, do you? Yep. No, no, that would be very, very infantile of us. No, but we, we teach others, right? I could use a review. <laughs> I saw your hand right now. <laughs> I just get it. I just get it. Um, I write in tongues. There you go. <laughs> we teach others. We teach our little children. You know, we teach others that they may go on too. Amen? Amen. So if you like, you know, look at that analogy there and you like that, that's really good, I think. You know, we will, in the beginning of our walk with God, be learning the ABCs. We will be learning the mechanics of it, but boy. Once you learn the mechanics of it, what beautiful stories can be written? What poems poets have been able to produce? What instructions and guides have been left for others to be able to build from? And that, all because we apply ourselves to the ABCs and then let God's gifts come alive. He'll take the foundational truths. He'll take the foundational ABCs of your life and bring you to a place that you'll walk with him. You'll never go back. Why would I go back? I don't want to 
want to go back before I knew my ABCs? I never would. Because I've been released into using that knowledge to live for God. His will has replaced my will Amen. as long as I seek it yeah. and ask it to be. Ask. And you shall receive. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So his word today is to encourage us in our relationship with him. That without him, you're kind of missing the point. <laughs> it is about him all the time. Amen. Even when we're conversing with each other, God is speaking He's speaking right in the midst of it. You know why? Because sometimes you're about ready to want to talk about something. He's saying, don't bring that up. Yeah, that might be hurtful. Yeah. Holy Ghost is right in the middle of everything. So, so let's never think that dismissing him from a part of my life is, is, is okay. It's not. I mean, I might be just talking with my wife, who I know for many, many years here, you know, and, and think I've got her all figured out. But, boy, I can really say something. The Holy Spirit might say, you better not say that. You know, and I better be listening. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't need to offend the one I love. <laughs> but he knows that. He is, he is so quick. We talked about that, and I don't know if I want to talk about that again, but, you know, we talked about how fast the Holy Spirit is. It isn't a matter of time for him. It's called eternity. Remember I said we are the only creation that are linked to eternity? But the animals are not. They have souls. We have soul and spirit. The soul and spirit, now that I'm alive, born again, I am linked to eternity. That's why I can see my Father in heaven. That's why I can pray His will, which is in heaven, will be done down here on earth. I am linked to eternity. So the thing about the Holy Spirit dealing with me is not about how fast He is at all. It's about eternity. The Holy Spirit's home, His throne, is in eternity. And, he, and He's in my heart as well. He's in my life. That means I'm linked to eternity. And that's why he's able to say something so fast before I can even complete a thought. He's able to get, he's already got it. It's established in eternity. It's outside of time. It ain't about how fast. It shows you where your home is. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's cool. That blows some, that blows some people's minds out there if they really want to start to think about that. The people that want to talk about evolution and stuff. Like, Man, they're missing it. God gives us such great proofs. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is one of them. It's not about a speed thing. He's faster than me every time. Quickens the word. Right. So think about it. That's cool. You know, it's it's not about time. That's our realm. That's cool. It's, it's called eternal. The life I came to give you is eternal life. Jesus said I came to give you eternal life. He ain't here to make your life better. He's here to give you a different type of life. Amen. It's eternal life. Lord. Good point, huh? Man, it's neat. Wish I prepared more for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amen. So we cannot allow ourselves to become weary in our well-doing. We can't let ourselves become sleepy in slumber because our flesh is weak. We need to stay strong in the spirit. We need to watch and we need to pray and we need to ask God to be a, a vital part of our life every moment of our life. Amen. We need to heed and obey Him. Amen. So Ephesians chapter 6, where we had uh, started here, says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. This and the following scriptures that uh, pers uh, follow in the New Testament continue to admonish us. And I'll just give you some so that we can put them on the tape. Philippians 4, 6, somebody turn there. Colossians 4, 2, another person turn there. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, somebody turn there. And the last one here will be 1 Timothy 2, 8. Okay, so we've got four references. Hopefully somebody's, who grabbed the first reference? Let me see your hand. Okay, you got the first reference, very good. Craig's got the, the second Second reference over in Colossians, First Thessalonians. Who took that one for me? Jesse or Steve? Jesse. Jesse, okay, Jesse. And then who's got First Timothy 2.8? Very good, Justin. Okay. All right, go ahead and uh, read those for us. They're all regarding prayer. Amen. Further admonition of prayer here. So we're going to go with Kenny first. Yep. Nice and loud. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God. Amen. What a powerful scripture. Amen. 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 Craig. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the same time for us. That's three, though. 
Amen. I love it. But it's all confirming. All these are confirming praise and thanks. And praying always. Watchfulness. Amen. All right, we had uh, Jesse. Rejoice always. Praise without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. I love that scripture. And Justin. <laughs> it's a long one, I know. I desire, therefore, that the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Do we hit? Oh, which one are we hitting? <laughs> First Thessalonians. No, they pray without ceasing. I don't have Timothy. Oh, well, I'm sorry. No, it's First Thessalonians. Sorry. Dang it. Uh, you got First Timothy two eight. Yeah. All right. Well, that was it. That was it. You got it right. You're right. Okay. Man, praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, yeah. You know, Jesus said, Ask, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open to you. What are some of the things that we need to be wary of that will cause us not to receive from God? Uh, selfish motives. Selfishness, yes. Sin. Sin, yes. Another good one. Insecurities, doubt, unbelief. Um, yeah, those are all good. Those are all good. Those are going to rob us. Those are those are going to rob us. Uh, here's one that might get you a little bit: disobedience. We're talking about that being obedient. The Holy Spirit, when you're disobedient, that will shut down that that fellowship. You know, you'll, you'll sense the lack of peace. And if that's something you really thrive at, being in God's peace, you're going to notice it right away. And, and I, I challenge us all to learn how to grow in that place. Knowing God's peace says, let the peace of God rule. Let Amen. it lead us. You know? That's how we know we're in the will of God when he has peace. <laughs> um, secret sin. Justin, it's that sin, I think, right? But secret sin. Secret sin will also shut down your relationship, your fellowship there. You know, it'll, it'll really break that. Another one that we might not consider so much is indifference. Mm -hmm. Indifference. You know, and that's, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, that was one this morning that I felt the Lord challenged me on. It's like, just because it isn't directly touching me doesn't need, mean that I need to be indifferent about it. And I, I felt that. So before I even kind of studied that, it was like, it was something, boom, that kind of popped me. I was like, okay, you know, I need to be a person of mercy. You know, I need to show mercy, even if it isn't because it's directly affecting me. I need to show mercy, not be indifferent about something. That's an important point. And so I was like, wow. You know, so I felt that a little bit was a part of what he was showing me this morning in my, you know, where's the, where's the peace, Lord? Where is it? <laughs> you know, maybe I was being indifferent about some things. Uh, another one that might be, uh, I kind of alluded to this, a neglect of mercy. Uh, it's, that, that one right there will kind of shut down God every time <laughs> you know, if you fail to be merciful. Uh, here was an interesting one. Despising the law. What does despise mean? To love less. Yeah. To despise the law. You know, I know we can boast in that we're not a people of the law. But, you know, we are a people of, that obey the law of life in the spirit. You know, and, and so... You know, we have to be careful that it's not about boasting in what I can do. Paul says that whenever we're trying to protect or boast about our own freedoms, we're missing it because we could potentially stumble somebody. So I don't want to get into a teaching on that at the moment, but you know what I'm talking about. That is important. If I'm so worried about having my way that I can show forth, I can do all this stuff, and I'm stumbling my brother, then he says, eh, better to have a millstone. Yeah. And you're missing it. That's not what God has called us to. So that was a good one, despising the law. Uh, this one kind of obvious, blood guiltiness. Ugh. I didn't say whether well, it was human or animal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kate's back here looking at me. Uh -oh. Have mercy on them squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Have mercy on them squirrels. <laughs> what they do to you? Cute. <laughs> too cute. Uh, amen. <laughs> Instability. That's a good one, too. That challenges us in our faith, amen? We need to be rock solid. We're not, you, know, you don't want to be up and down. That's, that's indicative of being a child. A child's going to, you know, they're going to act out all the time. They're going to be up and down. But as we grow in Christ, as we become more solid, stability is the name of the game, amen? Yeah. Because people are watching you. Yeah. And if you're unstable, that hurts. You know, the that, that, that Bible says in Proverbs, it says what? It's, uh, um, it's like having a, a, a broken tooth or a foot out of joint to depend on an unfaithful person. You know, that's tough. Because you got people depending on them, and all of a sudden it's like, well, what's going on? Yeah. 
not to pick on anybody this morning, but uh, because they were busy doing other things. But you know, it's like, look at we, we get used to having somebody behind a soundboard, which you know Darren's probably teaching today, I would imagine. But, but you know, you, you get used to that, and it's like, wow, you know, all of a sudden something's not happening that you expect, and Nicole's going, ah, anybody going to get the music? <laughs> so it's it's like that. We need to be there for each other. Not picking on Darren at all about that situation. We just said we need to be there for each other. Amen. Be stable. Stubbornness is another one. Ooh. Uh, I don't know how many stubborn people we had in this, you know, in their old life or in their new life. I'm not really sure, you know, but I will say I, I am of Irish, uh, what do you want to call it, descent? <laughs> I have some Irish blood in me. Uh, and the way you know that is because you can watch court. <laughs> uh, I just got yeah, that drew to you know. I was over. <laughs> no, we, I tell you, we'll hold, we'll hold to our point. You know, what I'm this man he he loves God. You ain't gonna get him off his testimony, man. You know what I'm saying? But you know, if there's something else he loves, you ain't getting him off that. Either, you know, <laughs> we we love him. We, 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 we do have that Irish blood, you know, we do have stubbornness. But when it comes to being obedient to God, it's time to put that aside. Amen? Amen. Let God have his way. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you and say what he would love, like of you, and, and then be, be faithful to that. <laughs> okay. Uh, we talked about instability. Last note here I have was self-indulgence. And I think that kind of goes back to despising of the law and iniquity. So we're going to leave that there. Today is a day... When we're going to wrap up these points, don't want to continue on. It's been, it's been some good teaching the last few weeks about fighting the good fight that we might lay hold of eternal life. We've got to get that helmet of salvation on. We've got to be fully jerked jer with truth. We've got to have that breastplate of righteousness. People need to see who we are. I'm not trying to hide this thing. My breastplate of light of righteousness needs to shine. People need to see there's something different about me, and that's fine. Doesn't mean I have to go speaking and being all immature. It just means I'm going to be walking and walk, and they can't. Why doesn't he do what everybody else does? Why ain't he quick to pick up the, the nudie magazine or, or the, to get in with the course jesting? You know what I'm saying? Our lives get set apart so quickly when you're just walking for Christ. It isn't about having to do anything special. Just don't do the, the wicked things that people do. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, your breastplate of righteousness is beating, it's shiny. And so when you look at it from that capacity there, you can see that our life in Christ is prepared by him to be able to fight that good fight that Amen. you can lay hold of eternal life. Amen. You're going to have the ability to, to keep your shield of faith because your trust is in God, not yourself. He says, above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith is the ability to believe that God's going to fight the battle for me. All I need to do is apply myself. If I will apply myself to my faith, be obedient to what he quickens be obedient to what he says. Remember, faith is walking out what I believe. If when God starts to quicken on me, I will be obedient to it. It's a counter to faith. We'll study about righteous Abraham in a little while. You know, good. he's got a good life. A lot of examples. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to be fully prepared for this battle. But the battle is not something ever lived or fought or conducted without him. It's always something that you'll be conducting with him. He's the one that helps you wield the sword. Amen. Amen. The sword of truth is his word, not your word. That's right. That's right. And when he has you wield it by prayer and supplication, you'll wield it right. You won't slice and dice. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know? yeah. I used to have a minister of slice and dice. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I'm so thankful I don't have that anymore. <laughs> so, praise God. I did not. <laughs> so, bless the Lord. You know, we're going to pray with all manner of prayer and supplication. I, I know sometimes our teachings, you know, on different types of prayer, intercessory prayer, and, you know, um, just the different things that we learn, like I said, sometimes can, can box in mentalities, even as we've been approaching looking at definitions of words. I don't want us boxed in today by talking about prayer. I want us to look at the living vi vitality that comes from it, the relationship aspect of communicating. If I, all I did was ever look at my wife and never talk to her, there wouldn't be much of a relationship there. There wouldn't be much benefit. There wouldn't be encouragement. Or, you she might look good. But you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't, I wouldn't get the encouragement that she gives me by, by her words. So prayer is like that. Prayer is, it is, it is, if you think about it in light of your relationship with God, like you would with your wife, your spouse, or someone else, you're looking at its ability to share life together. Receive the encouragement, the strength, the direction, the correction. Sometimes it says, you better not do that. And I was like, 
You know what I'm saying? Amen. And I might say, you better not do that. Amen. It goes both ways uh, for us. But with him, it's like, if he says don't do it, we're not doing it. <laughs> tell him what to do. But praise God, look at your relationships that way with God today. Look at it with prayer. It is about you being able to share in that life with him. Hear from him. Talk to him. him talk back to you. Feel his peace. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I tell you, don't ever go a day where you, you sense that not being there and just think that that's okay. Try it out. Because the devil would love for you to just embrace that. He would, the enemy. Yeah. He would love for you to just embrace, well, it's okay. I don't know where God is today. I don't sense that passion in my relationship, and I don't sense that closeness to him today. Well, then guess what? Tomorrow, if you don't deal with it, tomorrow might be another day just like that day. Before you know it, you're starting to cool off. You're starting to get to a place where you're getting distant from God's heart. Amen. He doesn't. He hasn't left you. There's something that may be going on that's separate. And so just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit when he speaks to you. Be quick to deal with something that God will be right there for you. That life, that joy, that peace. Without it, it's hard to walk in his will. His will replaces my will. But if I don't have his assurance, his peace, his life, his joy going, boy, that can be a really rigid, legalistic thing. And it's not about that because that's just <clears throat> going through the motions without the power of it, the life of it. So today I want to leave us with those thoughts. How important it is to just pray always. Thank God always. Amen. Give him praise. You know, talk to him. Let him talk to you. Feel his peace. Know it's there. I don't care, you know, where you're at today. If you feel like you're with him or you're not with him, it's a day that you can be with him. It's a day you can say, yes, Father, I understand, man. That's been feeling kind of awkward the last couple weeks, you know. I want that freshness. So let's pray and allow God to just reflect in our hearts. Let the Holy Spirit speak. You, only you will know what he's saying to you. Amen? Amen. First, or, I'm sorry, John 14 proves that out to us. Yes, sir. I, uh, and I took your advice uh, a couple weeks ago when you said, if you're not feeling God's presence and you don't feel like it's with you, throw it out and start crying until he gets there. So I, I was doing something yesterday. I was doing two things. One was supposed to be easy. One was supposed to be a little tricky. Well, the tricky part was easy, and the easy part was just, uh, and I'm like, God, you said you would be here. I was like, I need you now. I was like, because I'm getting mad. I was like, I knew you talented me to do this. I was like, and I'm just not going to go further. This lady's not going to get a car back until you show up. I was like, <laughs> something needs to happen. I was like, and I'm going to start acting like a child. I was like, because I need you now. <laughs> and I think when he's like, asked nicely, he finally, like, Lord really showed up. And it was, it was like just a garage experience where you know how to do something and you've done it so many times. And when your your vision is lost or you're skewed or you just got one track mind to get something done, you don't equate the Lord in it at all. That he'll remind you how quickly you needed them, and that's yeah. exactly what happened. Yeah. And it wasn't until he showed back up that things just finally got out of the rut that they were in, and back done, car got done, lady was happy, praise God. But yeah. he used that <laughs> thing to where I was. You know, sometimes I can get cocky thinking I know what I'm actually yeah. doing when I pop the yep, car. Yep. And he just reminded me that, no, I don't. <laughs> 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 Amen. Amen. Good testimony. Great. Amen. And you know, I think uh, that's the story of all of our lives. You know, none of us have it figured out. If we think we have it figured out, now nah, I think he knows a little bit more than we know, and he knows yeah. what's going around every corner. So we give it to him. Okay? Yeah. So praise the Lord. We thank God that he is growing us up in the faith to be strong, to be able to fight a good fight, to lay a hold of eternal life. Yeah. And at the same time, that as we get stronger, we don't have to stay as immature as we were. We don't have to stay forever newborn babes. We don't have to stay forever children. We can grow and progress in our walk so that when the foundations of what he's laid in our life, they can now be applied for living so that we can be the warriors. We can be the good soldiers, not entangling ourselves in the affairs of this life. But giving ourselves to God that his will would be done. And so I thank you today, Lord, that you're grooming your people, your church, your body, to be able to do your purposes that you've called them to. So, Father, lay up in our lives those things that are needed, no matter where we be in you, young and old alike. We love you, and we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit helping us to reflect. He brings all things back to remembrance. And so, Lord, I ask if anybody be struggling and feeling distant in their heart in any way, Lord, you know where we are personally. Sometimes it's, it's a subtle thing. No man would ever know if I feel I don't have a lack of peace or a lack of joy at the moment because I can fabricate. But, but Lord, we know. And I pray that every person here is taking the moment while the kids are quiet, while the service is over pretty early, <laughs> to give you a moment. And so, Lord, I thank you, Father. Help us to reflect on the issues of life. 
Lord, those things you bring to us, let us not procrastinate on. Let us not be neglectful. Lord, let us be people that do. And so, Lord, I thank you today. Holy Spirit, have your way. I thank you we are linked to eternity. Lord, I bless you, Lord. And I thank you right now, Father, that in our hearts, we have all found the strength to say yes. Yes, Lord. And because we've said yes, Lord, now let us be a people of determination to do that which we've committed to you, Lord. As you've shown it to me, I will do. And so, Lord, I thank you in every person's heart now that those things that you've been speaking to them about, they will find the ability to do because that's your grace. Lord, I pray your grace will be poured out in their life to do that which they've committed to do. So thank you, Lord. Let us not walk this, this life. Let us not fight this fight. Let us not run this race, Lord, without you. Let us be a people that are very, very close to your heart. Lord, for you make the difference. You are the wind in our sails. Lord, your grace gives us the ability to do it. So, Lord, in you, we shall go forth and shine. And shine as the lights of this world, Lord, that cannot be hid. Lord, we thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our lives, Lord, that we are reaching men. We are reaching our families. We are reaching our coworkers. We are reaching our, 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 our community, Father. Those that we are setting up shop with, even in, in businesses, Lord, we, we are making a difference because your will be done, Lord. Let your will and your way be done. So we thank you right now in Jesus' name for our time together to reflect on these things. And the people that said Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.